I'm TK North and in this video I'm going to show you my entire workflow editing a photo from start to finish in Lightroom. What is up YouTube? I'm photographer Tim Northy or TK North. Thanks so much for coming through to my YouTube channel. Today's video is all about editing in Lightroom. So the idea of this video is to show you my workflow in Lightroom, see how I achieve different effects using different panels in Lightroom and edit a photo from start to finish. Now I do all my photo editing in Lightroom with the occasional little tweak in Photoshop, which I'll also be doing today. I do use a lot of my own presets when editing as well, which you can find on my website. If you have purchased them in the past, I really do appreciate the support. It means you value my work and it really allows me to keep doing what I love. So thank you for the support. If you're interested, you can check those out as well. But today I'm gonna to be walking through a photo edit from start to finish. So let's jump into Lightroom and get started. So I've got a photo open here in Lightroom. It's actually a photo I've edited before, but I'm gonna go back and edit it again. It's one of my favorite photos. It's a picture of my fiance, Michelle, our first big trip away overseas together to Japan. This particular view of Mount Fuji, I haven't really seen before and we kind of stumbled on it by chance. So it's a real favorite shot of mine. So my first step when editing any photos is to come to lens corrections. I like to turn on remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. I recommend doing this for pretty much all your photos. It's just gonna fix any abnormalities that may come in depending on what lens you're using. It will fix the distortion. It's also gonna remove that chromatic aberration. So I recommend doing this for all your photos. You can even switch this on. So when you import, it automatically applies those settings, which can be worthwhile doing as well. So the next step, usually I would crop the image. For this image, I know I'm gonna do a little edit in Photoshop later on. So I don't wanna crop in until the final step just in case I wanna use different aspect ratios, I'd rather keep the file as big as possible and then crop in later on. Although I'm not gonna crop, I'm just gonna straighten it a little bit, make sure Michelle is right in the center of the image there, which she is. So the next thing I wanna do is just straighten this photo a little bit. So I'm gonna come down to transform. Usually I'd hit auto. For this one, it hasn't found any upright correction. So I'm gonna come over to guided, and just mark a couple of points. Let's go from there to this line so they become nice and straight. And to make a vertical point, let's just put one on the telegraph pole so it becomes nice and straight as well. And you can see there, I've got a pretty straight photo. I might even just rotate that a fraction and just bring in so Michelle is nice and centered. The next step, I'm going to start adjusting the tone of the image. I always do this as my first step after straightening and cropping. So let's come up to the tone curve initially. Actually for this one, I'm just gonna play with the highlights a little bit in the basics panel, just to get back my sky and then come down to the tone curve. So if you're unfamiliar with the tone curve, my last video I explained in a lot more detail how to use the tone curve, how to get the most out of the tone curve and why you should be editing using the tone curve because it is such a powerful tool. For this, I'm gonna go through quite quickly though, so make sure you check out the video if you don't quite understand or follow what I'm doing here. The first step, I'm gonna put three points on my curve, one for shadows, mid-tones and one for the highlights. I'm just gonna tweak those a little bit so I'll bring up my highlights a tiny bit those mid-tones, I'm just gonna bring up a little bit as well. Shadows, I'm just gonna darken a tiny, tiny bit. Bring up to create a very slight fade at the end of the tone curve there. And maybe do the same on the opposite end for those highlights. So just a little bit. The next thing I wanna do is come down to my blue curve. Again, I'm just gonna put three points on the curve and slightly adjust the blue in the shadows and the mid-tones. So the shadows is down here. I can pull, add in a little bit of yellow or add in a little bit of blue. I'm just gonna add in a tiny bit of yellow to the shadows there and maybe add in a tiny bit of blue to my highlights. So I turn that off and you can just see those slight adjustments that I've made with the tone curve there. So the next step, come back to our basic panel and start playing around a bit more with the tone of the image. 
So I'm gonna increase the shadows a little bit just to get back a little bit more detail in Michelle there, also in those trees. And I'm gonna bring down those whites a little bit, just a fraction. Maybe bring those shadows up a tiny bit more. And I'm just gonna darken the blacks a little bit about there. I'm still losing a little bit of detail here. So again, let's just bump up those shadows a tiny bit more. Tiny bit of contrast I also wanna add in. So let's just drag that across a fraction. I don't wanna add too much. I'm gonna leave clarity, dehaze and texture for the moment because I'm gonna use a radial filter later on to play around with that. So let's just leave that there for the moment. The next thing I wanna do is play around with my split tones. So split tones, usually I will be pretty consistent with this to the highlights I'm gonna add kind of a, a yellowy orange. Always hit option or alt when you're doing this, just so you can see which color you're adding in as you slide. And then I'm just gonna increase that a very tiny bit. So let's just go maybe eight on this one. Shadows, I'm gonna add in a little bit of aqua or blue. So let's go about 200, 205 will do. And again, I'm just gonna bring that up a real tiny bit. So my next step after those split tones, I'm gonna to come all the way down to camera calibration and just tweak my colors a little bit. This is where you can change your colors and kind of manipulate color a little bit. I usually do this before going to my HSL tab to make further adjustments. Now, again, I'm gonna start with red primary. So I'm gonna bring those reds a little bit more to orange, and then I'm gonna bring the blue primary a little bit more towards aqua. You can see how that's just changing those colors a little bit. Then I'm just gonna play around with green, have a look what it does. You can see a little bit more orange or a little bit more green that way. So let's bring it a little bit more towards yellow. If I turn just camera calibration off, you can see just the slight difference it's made in the color there. So the next thing I'm gonna come up to HSL and play around with that color a little bit more. Now the blues, I'm reasonably happy with that shade of blue. Of course, I could make it a little bit more aqua if you wanted or a little bit more kind of deep blue. I'm just gonna bring it a very fraction towards aqua and bring the aqua towards blue. Maybe just bring that back a fraction. So the next thing I wanna do is bring these yellows a little bit more towards an orange, about there. Let's come over to saturation. I'm gonna reduce my blues a little bit. Just fade that out, desaturate that a little bit. Then I'm gonna come over to luminance and play around with the blue as well. Now luminance, if you're unfamiliar, it's basically how the light reflects off the color. So if I change that, you can see it's gonna be less reflective to light if you bring it to the left. And I often like to do that with my blues. I'm gonna play around with orange and yellow here as well. You can see how that's kind of affected that 40 on the road and also the trees a little bit. I'm gonna actually reduce the luminance there on orange and maybe bring it up just to save some of that back in the, the grass and the trees. So let's go about there. So I'm gonna hit before and after just to see where we're at with this edit. You can see it's already added in, changed the color a little bit. I actually think it needs to be straightened a tiny bit more. I think that is probably more accurate. Yep, I'm pretty happy with that. So the next step, I'm gonna add in a couple of radial filters before I play around with a few other things. So let's add in one around Michelle there. This one is going to try and draw a bit more attention to the subject. So I'm gonna bring clarity up. I'm gonna bring my whites up, reduce the contrast a little bit. Just make that a little bit smaller so it's a little bit less obvious. And then I'm just gonna use my brush and erase parts of that radial filter around the outside. So if I turn on show selected mask overlay, you can see a little bit more what I'm actually erasing there on the road. This just means it's mostly going to be affecting Michelle rather than the area around her. So you can see if I really crank that up, it's not affecting the road as much. So the second thing I wanna do is add a bigger radial filter around Michelle. This is to create a little bit of a vignette other than create one around the edge of the border. By using a radial filter, you can kind of select the area you're creating that vignette. So make sure this box is unticked. I want it to affect the area outside the circle. I'm gonna make that nice and big. 
and not too dark. I only want it to be kind of a fraction. Maybe reduce the clarity just a little bit on that. Again, just to bring a bit more attention into the subject. I'm also going to just reduce the sharpness a tiny bit. With that other radial filter, I'm actually just gonna increase the sharpness a little bit. Again, it just helps add attention to your subject. So again, let's have a quick look at before and after, see where we're at. You can see where this edit's kind of heading. Still losing a little bit of detail in the shadows there. So let's just bump that up a tiny bit more. And I'm reasonably happy with that. So the next step, I'm gonna add another radial filter over to this area. There's already a bit of natural light there. You can see where the shadows are falling. So I'm really gonna increase that and make it look like the sun's really bright over in this area of the image. Let's grab another radial filter, nice and big this time. Place it there. I'm going to increase the exposure on this one. Add in a little bit of a haze. I've already got negative clarity there, which I want, which is great. And then bring it towards orange. I'm just gonna do that maybe to about there and just drag that over so it's nice and big. Maybe reduce my exposure a little bit. Let's have a quick look at before and after again. Starting to look pretty nice. Definitely like that little bit of extra light that's added in from that radial filter. So the next thing I wanna do, I'm gonna to start to play around with the detail a little bit. So if we come down to detail, so I'm gonna start by sharpening this image a little bit. I always like to hit option or alt when I'm doing this because you can really see what you're doing. So I'm just gonna increase that a little bit. Not a bad idea to really zoom in as well when you're doing it. So you can really see the detail and the sharpening that you're applying. So let's just go up to about 50 there. So it's really useful to use this masking slider because it's only going to sharpen areas of the photo that you want to sharpen. So again, I'm gonna hit option and just slide across until I'm happy with that, which for this one is probably about there. I don't wanna to sharpen too much of detail around the road. It's mostly on Michelle there, which is good. So add in maybe a little bit more detail as well. And I'm pretty happy with that. So let's zoom back out. Now, noise reduction, there was a little bit of noise when I zoomed in there. So let's just bring that up a fraction, maybe a, maybe to about 10, happy with that. Detail, I'm just gonna bring up a tiny bit, contrast up a tiny bit. Color, I'm just gonna make sure there's no kind of colors where there shouldn't be. So usually I bring that up to about 40. Even a little bit less is fine. So let's go about there little bit more detail and a little bit more smoothness. Now I've gone through this quite quickly because these are settings that I usually use for most of my photos. Obviously some you will need to play around with a bit more, but that's a pretty standard adjustment for sharpening and noise reduction when I'm editing. So pretty much finished with the edit here in Lightroom. The next step is I wanna open it up in Photoshop, remove this car here, and maybe remove some of this detail on the road. So let's jump into Photoshop and get started. So I've got my photo open here in Photoshop. The first thing I wanna do is zoom in and get rid of this car here. Now, lucky for us, as soon as we stopped here and got this nice shot, this couple decided to park in the background and take some photos of their own, which is always the way when you find a nice spot. So first step to remove the car, I'm just gonna draw around that very quickly. So let's use the polygonal lasso. So quickly, I'm just gonna draw around the car, make sure my feather's not too high. I've got it at five there quickly kind of draw around that. Don't have to be too precise. See my feather at five. Then I'm gonna right click, fill, content aware. And that's gonna do its best to fill in that area, which has done a pretty good job already. I'm just gonna fix up this line a little bit. To do that, I'm gonna copy the line from this side. So again, I'm gonna use the same tool and just copy that line all the way up through there. Then I'm gonna right click and I'm going to lay up via copy. That's so a bit of an amateur mistake here in Photoshop. It's always a good start to duplicate that base layer or your background layer, just in case you make any changes and you do wanna come back to the original image, you've always got that background layer as a backup. I forgot on this one, which is not a good habit to get into. So let's go back to that layer that I've copied. I'm gonna hit T to transform and I'm going to flip that horizontally. I'm then gonna bring that over to this side and just line it up as best I can with that line. 
and then I'm just going to erase part of that. So just make sure it fits in nicely. Erase those bits of the trees. If I zoom back out, you've got a nice line there and I've got rid of the car, which is great. So the next thing I wanna do is get rid of some of these markings on the road, which are a little bit distracting. So for this, I'm just gonna try and use the spot healing brush and see how that goes. So come back down to this layer and I'm just gonna draw over those areas on the road, which I wanna clean up. It can be a bit more precise when you're doing this, but I'm just gonna do it nice and quickly. Get rid of some of those spots and a little bit less distracting for your eye. So this is a handy tool. It doesn't always work well like you see just there, but in most cases it will work reasonably well. So you can always just try again and move it slightly and it might do a better job. You could also use your clone stamp for this. Now for this area here, I might just use the clone stamp. I'm gonna select my area that I wanna do, just make my brush a little bit bigger. Maybe turn down the opacity. And I'm just gonna draw over this line a little bit just so it's not as obvious there. The only thing I've created a bit of a line here, so let's just draw another point there and tidy that up a little bit. So if I turn that off, you can see it's kind of just tidied up the road nicely there. So the next thing I wanna do is just increase the shadow here where Michelle's standing. So you can see there's a nice bit of light coming from here that we've already increased. I'm just gonna match that by increasing the shadow where Michelle is. So I'm gonna come up to this reasonably clean layer that I've already got here. I'm gonna come down to the brush tool. I'm gonna to select my color. So let's zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing gonna come up and select the color that's already there in the shadow so that's pretty perfect and then I'm just gonna paint in a little bit of a shadow out through here so let's start with a really small brush and just increase that a little bit there you can see my opacity is turned down a lot that's because I don't want it to be super obvious I'm just doing this very lightly and even that I'm pretty happy with that I don't want to go overboard again if I turn that off you can see it's just increased it a little bit without making it super obvious. I'm gonna hit Command S to save. I've got that saved and I can open it back up in Lightroom. Final step is to make some little adjustments and to crop in Lightroom. So it will automatically open back in Lightroom because of how I opened it in Photoshop. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna crop in. So let's go five by four. Because I've left this to the final step, it means I've got the whole image to play with if I decide to export in a different ratio. It's all there ready to go. So let's go five by four there to start with. Maybe I'll just go up a tiny bit even. Let's go to about there, just so Fuji kind of stands out in the center of the image. Now, the next thing I wanna do, I still like this little bit of light, but let's increase it a little bit more. I'm gonna go pretty heavy on this edit, which may not be to everyone's cup of tea, but I am quite a heavy editor. This one, I'm just gonna increase that a little bit more. Make sure that's not too bright. And here you can see the completed before and after with all those edits in Lightroom, Photoshop, and then back in Lightroom. So there you have it. That's my entire workflow from start to finish, editing in Lightroom and a little bit in Photoshop. Hope you did find this video useful. Remember to give it a good old thumbs up if you did get some value out of it. And remember to subscribe so you can check out my other content as well. For now, thanks so much for watching. I'm TK North. Hope to see you guys here very soon. Bye for now. Damn, no coffee.